today we'll see the Rambam. It's also Shiloh of the Talmud, the beginning of the three weeks, and it's Shabbos, Pashas Pinchas coming up. And uh, there's many lessons to learn from Pinchas. First of all, very simple, not without getting into you know the actual circumstances of his time, but what was one powerful lesson of Pinchas is that opportunity came his way. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't do it, and all the leaders of the Jewish people didn't do it. But nevertheless, opportunity came his way. He realized this has to be done. He did it. And people were mocking him later. They said, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't do it. You know, this that you did it wasn't was coming from ulterior motives, etc., etc. I don't want to get into the whole thing. But the lesson that we have is, is that sometimes in life, opportunities come our way, but we shy away from them because let the other guy do it. If it's so important, why don't I hear everyone else being involved in it? And the lesson is that David should already pre-decided that this is your shlichus, this is your avoid, like Pinchas. It says that David should made Moshe Rabbeinu forget what to do because in order to give Pinchas his turn, his chance to do what he was meant to do and, and, and fulfill his mission in life. So when we have opportunities, we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, look at this way, the other way. If it's something good, we should definitely do it. You know, it doesn't mean you have to kill someone like Pinchas did. I mean, that was an extreme circumstance, but the general idea we have is also connected to one of the themes of this week's Pasha, is the Indian of dividing Eretz Yisrael. How was it divided? Through a girdle, through a lottery. It was divided. It was a whole system how it was divided. First they measured you know, the, 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 the different properties according to the amount of the members of each shavit, and then there was the goidol, and then the, 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 they, they said ahead of time, but through HaKadosh, what, what the, the latter portion would be. But the Rebbe explains, that the Rebbe writes in Tani, and get us HaKadosh, Simen Zayin, that the idea of a goidol, why is it that the land of Eretz Yisrael was divided through a raffle? Sit down, figure out how, many, how much population population of each shevet and divide the land accordingly. Why does it have to be done through a raffle? And one of the lessons is the idea of a goidol, of a raffle, is a It makes no sense. Two people don't know what to do, or a person himself doesn't know what to do. So they make a raffle. Whatever the raffle says, that's what they're going to do. So we could look at it that it's a game. It's any, mini, mini, mo. You know, whatever, whichever, when you flip a coin, if it's heads or tails, that's how you decide. But really it's explained that a goidol has a very high source. A goidol comes from a level that's higher than understanding. We find by Yom Kippur, the innkeeper made a, the king Godel made a girdle with the two, with the, with the, with the two goats. Haman made a girdle. Right? So this speaks a lot about the concept of a girdle. What's the nekud over here? That the idea of a girdle means a certain things that make, don't, don't make sense in life. But the Rebbe says that every Jew is obligated to do all the mitzvahs. But each Jew has one mitzvah which he particularly, this is his shlichas, this is his mission. That's where his neshama, he has a special chayis in doing it. And the other person, everyone else doesn't have it. And it doesn't make sense why Dafka, this person, has this mission. There could have been many other great people that should have come up with this idea, but he decided to do it, but, but he feels connected to it, so then this means this is his mission, this is what he should do. And sometimes Dafka, that mission that you're supposed to do, is the thing that comes the most difficult. But if you know this, you feel this is your mission, this is your shlichus, you should do it. You don't understand why Dafka has to be yours, but that's what you should do. You shouldn't... When it comes to business matters, you know, if you'd be the one to be able to figure out, make a patent that will make you a millionaire overnight, you wouldn't hesitate, you wouldn't say, oh, why didn't the other guy do it, you know? Same thing is when it comes to spiritual things. You know, we have last week, we have Balak, uh, Bilam, I mean. The interesting verse in the Baal Shem Tev, and this verse is said in many different ways, but the Baal Shem Tev says, the Mishnah says in Pirkei Yavis, that we should be from the students of Avram Avinu, not from the students of Bilam. Bilam had it was a big Baal Taiva. Yeah, he wanted a lot of honor, a lot of money, a lot of uh, a lot of whatever was there wasn't enough. He, he, he you know he, he liked to enjoy life. Avram Avinu was very humble. He didn't want any money, etc., etc. So it says, be from the students of Avram and don't be from the students of Bilam. I mean, obviously, I mean, isn't that a very simple? What does the mission have to tell us that? So the, the Baal Shem says a very deep point. Every person has both qualities. From one hand, it, it all, only depends on what. Bilam HaRasha, Avram Avinu also had a lot of a desire to, to gain a lot. But in what in spiritual matters, physical matters, he didn't want anything from himself. Spiritual matters, he was never happy with what he had. Bilam also had the meat of Avram, 
of being humble. But when in spiritual matters, in spiritual matters, you know, he wasn't interested, you know, it's not for me, it's too little, you know, I'll leave it for, 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 for more higher people. So in everything in life, when the person says, oh, it's not for me, sometimes he says it's not for me, and sometimes he says, no, it has to be me. It only depends regarding what it is. If it's something that you have a highest in, this is what you really want, then on the contrary, you want, you want to be the top, all the way on the top. Something that you don't desire, you, you, don't, you, know, you try to shy away. So the mission is telling you that use your ambition, use your ego, use your taiva, use your desire, your passion for good things. Never be happy when it comes to money, never happy with the money in your bank. So don't be happy with the amount of learning you, 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 you accomplished today. Don't be happy with the things that you did. So a person should never turn away and say, Me, Ani, Moani, who am I, what am I? If somebody, somebody would offer you a, 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 you know, it comes to physical things, you would never say that. So spiritual matters, you shouldn't say that either. So anyway, the point is when something comes your way, you shouldn't, shouldn't push it away. Maybe someone else could do it. Be able to do it, you should definitely do it. And this could be what your whole neshama came down to this world for. It's also Pinchas is Zayli Yahu. We know that Pinchas brought peace between Hashem and the Jewish people, and Hashem Pinchas is going to be the Neshama Veliyohanavi. Meaning, Eisin Leis Peace Yisholem Veliyohanavi will make peace between the Jewish people and Hashem, and between the Jewish people and each other. And this is also the connection with the Siyum Haram. But right at the end of the Ram, when we learn today about Eliyohanavi's mission, that will make peace in the world. And we speak about it when Mashiach will come. There won't be any jealousy, competition. People will get along with one another. So. It says when, when Mashiach will come, he's going to open, what is going to be his opening words, shalom, peace, to bring peace into the world. So this obviously connected also with Shiva Sabbat Hamas, with the three weeks, which one of the things that we have to work on is Avas Yisrael and Achtos Yisrael. And here too, we have to work on it in a way of a geir, in a way that doesn't make sense. It's very easy to uh, have Avas Yisrael for people that you love and you like. But when it comes to your next door neighbor, for your coworker at work that you, you, you entangle with in a fight, it's very hard to appreciate to try to have Avas Yisrael for such a person as well. Right? We say Leonov, you will make peace. Certain things only Leonov will be able to iron out. Avas Yisrael, not for Rabbi Yisrael, right? Yeah, but what we, what, but the idea of having Avas Yisrael, the idea of Gerol means in order to bring Mashiach. Mashiach is also a Mashiach Baal Abbas Achadas. It's higher than understanding. In order to bring Mashiach, you have to do things that don't make sense. The Avshiva Sabbat is also, the walls of Yerushalayim were breached. When the walls of Yerushalayim were breached, the unity of the Jewish people was gone. The walls kept them together. Now that the walls were breached, the enemies were able to infiltrate. The Jewish people, some were coming, some were living, leaving. There was no unity. So the Rebbe says, the way you have to fight that is by breaching the walls. Shtusiktush in the spiritual way. Have Avasis, Tzadol, Sir, Dei, in a way that makes no sense. So again, Pinchas also, he did things that were beyond logic. He put his life at risk to do what he felt was right in order to save the Jewish people. And uh, when, uh, obviously, again, we're not, uh, we're not talking, telling anyone to take a sword and kill any people. But have Avas Yisrael, even when it makes no sense, definitely is a very good thing. And we'll just finish up with one word that uh, we could have tried to apply in our Avoida, maybe to start from uh, baby steps. There's a word that I forget where I saw it. It's brought on in Sfarim. The, the Gemara says that Hanalovim ve'inon oilvim, those that are embarrassed and don't embarrass back, shemin cherposim ve'inon meshivim, they hear their shame and they don't respond. Oisin me'avus mechim ve'yisurim, they serve Hashem out of love and they're happy when they're suffering. Saleim akasavim, regarding them, the pasuk says ve'oyavov kutzeis Hashem eshivudav. It says when Mashiach will come, those that love Hashem will shine like the the sun comes out in its full strength. So I, I heard of, I saw a word, it's, I think it's, it's a very applicable word we could try to work on, to try to digest. It sounds like this, if you look close at this Maimar Chazal, there's three levels. First level is, Hanalovim Vein and Elvin, they're embarrassed, but they don't embarrass back. Somebody that embarrasses you, it doesn't say you don't answer. It says you don't embarrass, you don't shtech back. Somebody says, you're a thief, you're this, no, I'm not a thief, don't answer back. No, you're the thief, you know, there's two levels here. One, one thing is, somebody makes accusations, someone says something that's hurtful, answer back, but don't try to shtech back, try to clear your name, try, you know, that's one level, that's a starting point. The next thing is, a higher level is, you hear somebody is embarrassing you, you don't say anything, keep your mouth shut, right? You know that David has his whatever it is, you don't get a, you know, you're not concerned what people say, 
you know, whatever, not getting into that, you know, what him speak about, that somebody embarrasses you, there's no reason you have to answer. I mean, what, let him think what he thinks, and they, be, you know, they be sure takes care of you, and whatever, they be sure decided that you have to hear this, the, 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 that person should say these things, believe it. Uh, even the higher level is not only you don't answer back at all, but you're happy about it. You're happy that Abisha sent you this way, whatever, this was some type of refinement that you feel that, 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 that Abisha sent you when you're happy with it. That's a very high level. The first beginning level is now love and vain love. When somebody says something, the best thing is to keep your mouth shut anyway, because answering back will never, will never improve any relationship, it just makes things worse. The mother says that a fight is like ever saw, you know, you could see, if you ever saw a, a video of how, uh, how, how um, rivers overflow, they have levees, right? You try to block the water when, the, when there's a lot of pressure, so what you see is, first thing you notice is a tiny trickle of water. And very soon, that little trickle, the whole levee completely breaks apart and, there's a, and the city gets flooded. So the Gemara says when there's an argument, it's like a trickle of water. It's a little thing, somebody said something, then you answer back. It starts off very small, before you know it, the whole thing is gone. The, the, you know, the, the, the fight erupts and uh, it's very hard to get out of it. So at first, you don't have to answer. Even if you do answer, don't stech the person back. Your focus should be clearly, you know. And I love them, they know them. Try, try to minimize your... Uh... Anyway, the is that we should have, we should have Pinchas Eliyahu, we should have these...